It is a beautiful, clear, crisp fall day. I love these kinds of days. And even though it's fall, we have new life popping up all over the place. And here's the latest addition hiding under the old hay baler. This is Prudence's calf. It was born this morning and it is, oh, well, let's see, guy. It's a girl. It's a heifer calf. There you go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Look at this little gal. She's a little cutie. It's nice to get them in the first 12 hours of life because they don't run away so much. She wants to go looking for mom. I'm sure mom's not far away. There she goes. That's not mom. That's Orden. Orden's been known to get confused once in a while too. Well calves get right on their feet when they're born. She's looking for her mom. That's not mom. That's little guy's mom. Hey, little one. You're a nice looking calf. That's not your mom either, that's Doc. Huh. Are you my mom? No, I'm not your mom either. There comes mom. Hi, Prudence. Ah, don't worry, I'm just checking her out. Little one. The herd always has to do the meet and greet when there's a new addition. Good job, Prudence. Like most of our Dexter calves, we came out to do chores this morning and there was a brand new calf here in the pasture with Prudence licking her off and Prudence has had a lot of calves. Prudence is 11 years old. She's one of the original cows that we bought off a neighboring farm. She's always been a great cow. I'm not sure why she was late with her calf this year. Obviously she was bred late last year. She was in with the bulls at the right time and she must not have taken for Geez, three or four heats, so it'll be something to keep an eye on next year. I think when calves are born, they have this innate instinct to look for a big barrel-shaped thing over their head with a vertical thing hanging down from it. They don't really know whether it's supposed to be the front or the back one, so they investigate till they find a teat. <laughs> hey, little one. <laughs> oh, you guys. You're a motley crew. Look at all you guys. And there he is, or she, I should say. Hey, little one. Yeah. Marty, how are you? Yeah, nice to see you too. Unlike with piglets, there's little to worry about having a calf in colder weather like this. The nights have been going down to about 25. Today it'll get up to 50 or 55. Cattle are just fine calving in this weather. In fact, we call this cow weather. The cows actually prefer being in the cooler temperatures than the heat of the summer. So we don't have to worry about this calf born out in the pasture here. It's not too muddy and she'll do just fine. Last calf of the year. There she goes. Well, hello, little one. You're not too shy. You go check me out. I probably smell funny. <laughs> You're happy to be out in the world, aren't you? Yeah. Thank you, Prudence. Thanks for letting me see your little one. Good job. I thought I would take a little time this afternoon and try something I've been thinking about for those piglets to protect them. Something easier than building a steel rail. I have this scrap piece of 5 8 inch plywood laying around and I'm gonna cut it to size. I took some measurements. And in honor of LSU's valiant effort the other night against Alabama, I have an LSU t-shirt on today. 
I don't really play favorites with college football. I like to watch it all, though I rarely get to watch a whole game. They just take too long. And I got two old two by fours here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them on this way so it's stronger. Oh, that's a two by three. That'll work anyway. And cut 45s on the end of them. Huh. I don't know about you, but whenever I start a carpentry job, I always use my marking pencil, and I have to have two or three on hand. I'll go get another one. Aha! 45 on there. So this end matches up like this, and then I can mark the other end. And cut this end. And that goes on there like this. Give it some extra strength. And I'll cut the other one too. Now I'll just turn this whole assembly over. And then I can screw my boards onto the plywood like so. Cows like that part. Now we'll get this one positioned. Now then, see how red is laying right now? That's important. All right, now I'm gonna really upset the apple cart for poor Red and her piglets. By the way, sometimes I call Red Missy, and I don't know why Missy was a sow that we had before Red. I just get confused, you know, it's age. All right, guys, I'm sorry to come in and disturb y'all, but this is important. Watch out, Red. She's sound asleep. Red, I need to get you up. We're gonna make a modification here. Come in, come in, come on, lady. Come on, see how that fits. Well, you gotta get out of the way. Come on, let's get up, come in, come on. There we go. Come on, you gotta get up. Come on. Come on. You gotta back up. You gotta get up and back up. There we go. Get your head turned around. I'm gonna put this right in here. I think you guys can get out of there, no problem. We'll move it up there. Oh. These pigs always do a number on my poor cameras. So I have this all in place and all it is is that the piglets can scoot under and into this corner and mom tends to lay down in this corner to nurse her piglets because the heat lamps are here. So this is a natural corner to put it in. This notch here serves no purpose at all. This happened to be the shape of the piece of plywood that I had. I wanted it to be this high all the way across but that's the way it goes when you're using scraps. I think it'll be all right. The key I've found with pigs is not to, if I made this out of just slats, the mom would tend to play with them. And when pigs run into plywood, like I have on the edges of the pen here, they tend to wreck it less. So that's why I made it out of plywood. And she's got to come and investigate. The next step is I'm going to make this warm behind the plywood so the piglets want to go back there by positioning heat lamps in the right place. And to do that, I got to put a crossbar in to hang them down low under. All right, let's go in and finish this. Looks like it's working good to me. We even got some piggers over in there already. This piece here is going to be my light hanger. And they'll sit in here like this to hang the lights from. Just screw it into place here to keep everything safe. Now I got to modify the lights. Take these down. Red, don't mess with my camera. Red. I got the lights in and what I've created here is the warmest place in the house. Two heat lamps right together hung down lower so the piglets will want to go in here because it's nice and toasty. Especially important as cold as the nights have been getting. 20, 25 degrees. It's cold. Piglets can get under here and get all the heat they want. Now the last part of my master plan is to move this third light. We're going to leave this one up higher so Missy, or Missy, Red, <laughs> doesn't 
doesn't bump into it. I guess these little piglets want to take a meal to go. They can eat on the run. I've seen them do it. Oh, she's checking it out. I don't know, first a little scratch. Let's see what she does. Don't lay down over here. Just don't do that. You'll spoil my plan. Well, here's my plan. Once I get out of here and everybody settles down, I'm hoping that Miss or Miss Red is going to lay down here because it's nice and warm. It's the warmest spot in the pen. It's where she tends to lay anyway. Her water dish is over behind the camera and that gets a little wet. So she lays over here in the corner. Her piglets will have an even warmer spot to go to underneath this partition. This is nothing new. A lot of people that raise pigs have done it. I tried building one of these when we first raised pigs and it didn't work. And I think what why it didn't work is I built it out of two by sixes. It had lots of gaps in it. I didn't hang the lamps low enough and so the piglets didn't want to go under it. I'm hoping that this one will work. My biggest worry is that she's going to get her snout under it and push up on it and wreck it. But we'll see. My intent is just to leave it in until the piglets are, you know, three weeks old or so till the danger of her laying on them is pretty much over. And then I'll take it out and the nice thing about this is movable, I can move it over to the next pen for when Brownie has her piglets. And when Brownie has her piglets, it might be really cold out because it's going to be getting toward mid-December, late December. So if I need to, I can lay a piece of plywood over the top of this when I move it over to her pen to trap the heat in here and keep her piglets nice and warm in the coldest weather. So I hope it works. And I'm going to try it with just this now, and if I have to, I can put rails in on either side. I've been scratching my head a little bit about how I'd like to build them out of wood, just because it's a heck of a lot easier. How to build them out of wood, get them out far enough without her just tearing them off the wall. So, I'll cogitate on that. Meanwhile, we'll see how this works. They're checking it out. It's warm under there, guys. I think you'll like it under there. I think you should go visit. Watch out, Red. I'm getting out of here and I'll let you settle in and we'll see what happens. There's a couple under there now. This will be so much better for your piglets, Mom. They're all going under there. They're starting to fall asleep in that heat under there. They're nodding off. Well, she didn't lay down the way I'd hoped she would, but that way is okay too. The little piggies wagging their tails. See them all under there? It's nice and warm under there, guys. Yeah, you like that. And as an added bonus, Mom gets some peace here while her piglets are snoozing behind the partition. It's a win-win. And the third win is it gives me some more peace of mind. Boy, it was not good when we lost all those piglets. This black one, this Berkshire one, always seems to want to eat. What a pig he is. These guys are all conked out under here. I love it. Look at who's eating hay outside the pen. It's a little guy. Hey, little one. How are you? You gonna go back in with mom? Mm hmm. Hillary's going out to collect eggs and feed and water the hens, and I thought I would show you the state of our laying flock in their production situation, which is pretty woeful. Henry usually comes out and helps mom with the chores out here in the field. Hey, Henry. Hi. Henry, I got a question for you. Go ahead. What do you call someone that has no body and no nose? He always has to think about these things for a long time. I don't know. 
Nobody knows. Nobody no knows. I was yes. thinking that it was going to be something like that because the original was like, nobody. So, uh, uh, that's like, that's a pretty bad sense. joke, isn't it? Yeah. I'd say it's a pretty bad joke. This that's is it. it? That's it. Oh my gosh. Slackers. Last week we butchered 50 stew hens and we got 50 more to go this week and then it'll be time to move these guys into the winter house for the winter. But our egg production went way down when we did the 50. It's like we got the 50 that were actually laying eggs although they were the oldest chickens and they gotta go. We have to weed out the flock before winter but the egg laying situation is sad. At least there's hope with the pullets. Can you guys see these bugs flying around in the air whenever we get a warm afternoon? We get swarms of them this time of year. They're really interesting in the sunlight. The pullets are here in the winter house. We have a hundred pullets in here, which they're actually really hens now. They've started laying eggs. They start out laying smaller eggs and these guys have been laying for about a month for the most part and we're getting quite a few eggs out of them now. Out of the hundred, we're probably getting probably 50 eggs a day out of them, so that's pretty good. It looks empty in here because most of them are out in the two outdoor runs right now. Here's some that are hanging out outside, and here's some more. We're getting a lot more eggs out of these guys than we are in the hens out in the field, although there's a lot more hens out in the field than there are pullets in here. A hen's egg laying frequency follows the day length exactly. Our hens hit their peak on June 21st, and they hit their lowest amount laid on December 21st, except for young ones like this that have just started laying. They'll, for the most part, plow right through the first winter laying eggs. And the only way that you can get them to increase production in the winter is to take away all the windows so that they can't tell how long the day is and light the house artificially. And we prefer to give our ladies a break in the winter time as nature intended. So that's how many eggs we get out of 100 pullets. It's a lot more than we got out of the field. And that's one of the reasons we bring the hens into the winter house when we do, because it just gets to be too much work to keep them out there and keep moving them around when we're barely getting like 12 or 18 eggs a day out of them. It really, it really gets sad. I have a riddle for you. How do you drop an egg onto a concrete floor without cracking it? You give up? any way you want. Concrete floors are very hard to crack. <laughs> right chickens? I came into the pig barn to do afternoon chores and look at this. Here's mom. There's no piglets in here. Let's go see where they are. They're all hanging out under there. I love it when a plan comes together. That is a very good deal. I've got two heat lamps under there right now because they're little and it's getting very cold at night. I'll move that to one pretty quick. And it'll be just like taking care of chicks where you see if they lay directly under the light or if they lay to the side of it. If they don't lay directly under it, then it means that it's too warm and I can pull one out. Well, little ones came out to try some water. I'm drinking. Look at little one all curled up in a ball in here. She found the good place to lay. Right, little miss? Sometimes you work a long day and you don't feel like you accomplished anything. Those are frustrating days. And then there's days like today where you do some jobs that don't take that long and you feel like you accomplished a whole lot. I feel that way with the piglets, that they have a safe place now and it gives me some assurance that when Brownie has her piglets when it's colder out that I have a method to keep them warm and safe too. So that is really good. In addition, Hillary and I took our last two steers of the season to the butcher this morning. They were nice looking steers. So today's been a very productive day. I have a couple other notes. Um, I did a video on the 504 last week. I got great response to that. I appreciate y'all for watching that. I'm waiting on parts now. I should have parts in a couple more days and then I can get back to finishing that. And I am very close to 200,000 subscribers. In fact, by the time this video comes out, we'll probably be over 200,000 subscribers. And I can't express 
my appreciation to you all enough for watching the channel. When I started the channel, my goal was to get a thousand subscribers and look where it's come. I'm proud of it and I couldn't have done it without all of your help. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for that. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.